This is Panarea and welcome to the live show Up Close on the Mic. Today I'm here with my first guest, Robbie. Hi, Robbie. Hey, everybody. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me, Pan. I'm doing great. How are you doing this fine evening today? Uh, yes, it's noon for me. I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. Um, always happy to take a break from my day and do the show. And Yes. And let's start with uh, where you're from. So you're from West Virginia? Yes, I am from Fairmont, West Virginia. I was born in Kingwood and raised in Fairmont. I see. Okay, very, very nice. I lived in, not in West Virginia, but I lived in Virginia. Oh, okay. Um, you know, your neighbor state. Um, yes. In Richmond. Uh, I guess they're probably very similar, right? The people are similar? Well, no, I, I, could, I can't really say because I've never been, like, I've never lived in Virginia, but everybody around here, yeah, are really neighborly. Uh, very friendly, it's, right? Yes, very friendly. Yes, it's 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 an amazing, beautiful state. Both of them next to each other. I mean, I, I, they were. It was obviously one state originally, and it's it, they've everything about Virginia and West Virginia. Both have very beautiful landscapes. About right. about it, I love this place. I love it. Yes, yes. I'm actually going to Virginia this summer. Uh, I'm going back to Richmond. Uh, awesome. My my husband needs to go back there for a few things um, when it comes to his his job, but we're spending time at Virginia Beach, so that's going to be really fun. Yes, for me and my kids. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm excited for you. Virginia Beach is also beautiful. Yes. I was going to say, yeah, they even have beaches. I should have known that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's focus on you now. So you're a singer, songwriter, and a musician. You've been yes. doing this for a long time. Tell yeah. us how it all started. I always start my, my interview with your humble beginnings. So I want to know how did it begin for you? How did your, your love for music uh, come into your life? Well, it had a lot to do with my father's influence. My father, shortly after he got out of the military, he sit, served seven years in the military. He got out and just uh, wanted to play guitar. He wanted to sing. He wanted to travel. And he started playing music in, uh, in 1990. Uh, he got to... Uh, a, uh, he started working with some individuals that were from New York and even got invited up to New York. He was really close to getting a number one hit. And in 1991, he met with my mom. I met my mom. And uh, because my mom got pregnant with me, my dad at the time was 45 years old. He uh, was offered a contract and he turned it down because my mom was pregnant with me. So instead of being on the road, he, he was a dedicated father and stayed at home to take care of me. And, uh, Basically, whenever it came to show, shows that got me into you know playing music, he, he would make sure I had any instrument to succeed. I mean, sometimes would go into debt just to make sure I had certain instruments because instruments are not cheap. But he, but like just for an example, he'd buy me drum sets if I wanted to play the drums. I uh, started, I actually started playing the drums. That's how I uh, learned the other instruments, the guitar and piano. Uh, my dad's just a phenomenal person, and uh, he took me to places like the Sagebrush Roundup that's also here local in Fairmont, West Virginia, and uh, other areas like that, Moore's Auction Bar, and a, a lot of places, a lot of cool places. So a lot, a lot of it came from my dad. So he was your influence. <laughs> yes, a major part of my influence. And then I met my wife that, <laughs> well, uh, and uh, I'd say about me and her got together six years ago. We just celebrated our uh, uh, six year anniversary, not our wedding anniversary, but our six year being together. I saw and, that uh, on Facebook, I did. Yes, <laughs> yes. And well, see, she uh, she was in, she's the one who inspired me to write a lot of the ballads that I have on my YouTube channel nowadays because she had to go through a lot. And I mean a lot in her teenage years. I won't get into many, very many specifics, but she didn't have a luxurious life. And uh, I saved her from that. And and in the period of us not being able to be together, one of the shows or videos that you're going to feature today, I wrote a song called Better Than Me. And uh, in that song, uh, it, didn't, it wasn't like I took a piece of paper and dotted down everything. It, it came to me in a dream because it was everything I was feeling for her at the time. And it felt so real. I remembered everything I said to her. Uh, I was singing to her in front of a large group of audience in a dream. And I remember it, it was it was it was very vivid, Pan. It was very very very. I can still remember it. I can still remember the smells. I can still remember the lights. It was crazy. It was like it actually happened, but it didn't. But I remembered the words, and that's how "Better Than Me" came about. And ever since, ever since then, we I've just been writing for her and uh, oh, writing my own sweet. stuff. Yes, yeah, that's so 
sweet. I actually, um, I dabble a lot with poetry and I did write a poem about my husband, the way he makes me feel. Um, I That's would so like sweet. to see that. I yeah, it's like basically, even though I'm at a really bad place, He's always I there, understand. you know, he's my rock. Yes. He, he always tells me, he whispers things to me all the time. He's a very gentle person. He's not like me. Like I'm very, you know, outgoing and very social and kind of rough a little bit on, you know, like, yeah, you know, I'm understand. not like soft, but he is. And he kind of grounds me and he always tells me things like in a very soft way, like, I love you. You're amazing. And so I wrote a poem about how he, he keeps reminding me that I'm, I'm a good person and I'm loved and appreciated. That's so, so beautiful. I, I would like to turn that poem into a song. One you day. So should. I, you really I totally should. should. Yeah. And, and so I totally get it um, when you were talking about uh, your, your, your wife and how, you know, you, everything appeared in a dream. But can you imagine your subconscious? What yeah, the, you, see, you know, it's, my heart was, ra I don't know how, raging would be a proper term, I guess. It, it, it was the fact that she wasn't allowed to talk to me and I wasn't allowed to talk to her. And uh, like, if anybody would like to hear, whoever sees this interview, who would like to see know the full story, I invite you to send me a personal message. You can hear it from her side as well as my side. I won't get into great detail on here. But if you guys would like to check it out, I'm more than less, I I welcome it. I welcome to sit, have you shoot me a message yeah. because we are open people. Yes. Let's go and showcase uh, the song. Okay. Better than me. All right. Awesome. Are, Sounds are good. Are you ready? I yes. have to do some technical things on my end. I'm going to mute your microphone. Uh, okay. Give me a couple of seconds. Um, still trying to figure all this out. Plus, I'm doing it alone. I don't have a tech crew to do this for me. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. I'm going to uh, find it right now. I have it open. There it is. It's a very, very good song. Thank you. And now I now I understand a little bit more, you know, behind the song. We talked about this. Yes. Let's, uh, let's, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Happy smile 
And she leaped in my arms It still drives me wild Cause it's too early Just to know we won Love is not something It's easily God. What was so bad With the way I loved you Why was it so hard change my mic let me bring you back <laughs> with the yay robbie robbie you asked me Thank why you. i brought you you asked me why i brought you on my show yes <laughs> that's why that's why i brought you on my show <laughs> thank because you you're amazing the lyrics are amazing your voice is amazing you are amazing Come thank on. you i appreciate that i i, I haven't the last time I've ever done anything out like this was a while ago. I was actually a little bit younger than this. I was on America's Got Talent, and uh, I, I can't I did see that. I did. Yeah. I, I saw the picture on your Facebook. I I didn't know if I should talk about that. You want to talk about it? I, I don't think I legally can because I said I denied. I, okay, I, I they offered me a contract and I said no because they wanted the rights to my music. So they pulled my audition. You're and there's a, there's a, yeah there, that's not a joke uh it, 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 it's actually a major serious things with a lot of songwriters and who are musicians if you are a songwriter i would not recommend ever doing a game show like that unless you know yourself you're not losing the rights to your material because the contract they wanted me to sign basically was gonna uh i would lose rights to my material two years after and prior to me signing that contract wow. so so a show like a show like that is good for someone who doesn't have his or song. her own music, but wants yes. to work with the be, right people and yes, be more and be a singer. Yes, to be a singer because it also gets you all kinds of publicity, like acting, uh, stuff like that. Uh, they always need shorts for commercials. It's it's crazy how they do things there. But uh, other than that, I wouldn't recommend it for songwriters and for any game show for that matter. That's okay. just me though. Well, that's good to know for anyone who's watching right now and is a singer songwriter don't bother don't waste your time going to to a place like that because it's like or at least said, know know what you're signing make sure you know and read what you are signing before you just sign on the dotted line i don't, th I don't think anyone would be interested in doing that you know exactly yeah. exactly it's just the amount of see a lot of people i think it was in 2014 whenever i did the estimates if you if any songwriter has a number one hit song before they even shared it with whoever company they're affiliated with if they're even affiliated with a company it's equivalent to winning the lottery at 18.4 million dollars and that was in 2014 at the time so you don't just want to sign away your your material because that's every person that listens hears it downloads it you know it's, it's, it's a lot it's a lot of money yeah okay now let's talk about your music. Where can people find your original music? Where are you streaming your music? YouTube uh, and Facebook, Spotify. Uh, DistroKid has helped me reach out on other apps. And uh, I actually uh, hope that they're still, they should still be available. But Spotify, iHeart Music, uh, even the Apple iTunes, I think they had it on there. If you're with uh, DistroKid, they stream it everywhere. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. everywhere. Um, and your YouTube channel is doing very well. You have a lot of videos that are uploaded. Um, how long did it take you to work on your YouTube? 
See, to be honest with YouTube is I actually have two other accounts that uh, are on YouTube because I couldn't remember my passwords <laughs> for them accounts. So I had to make uh, make the last one that I'm in now that I sent you links to. Yeah. Those, that's my actual, that's my current YouTube. So I'm you over lost the, you lost the, the previous one because you forgot. <laughs> Because I, I forgot my passwords to the accounts and uh, the email that was associated with my original YouTube. I actually have a video of me and Randy Travis singing, singing together on stage and Uncle Cracker. And I, I can't even access I can't even access my account. I'm sure there's a way I'm sure there's a way you can do that, right? I, I would hope so. I just don't, I don't, I'm not a computer savvy person. My wife had to help me figure this out. Okay. I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a uh, I phone see. person. I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So it's good to know that your music is streaming and people can go check you out, discover your new music. Where would you like your music uh, to bring you? So what are, what are your plans for the next, uh, I don't know, let's say five years. Where would you like to see your music in five years? Or or yourself as an artist? I would honestly, my actual main goal right now is to just uh, get out there so people can hear me because I haven't been doing anything in a while. But the actual main goal is to be able to open a place for musicians and songwriters like who was like me, but have an area where they can come to without having to join a college tech program, without having to get a GED. At that, if I wanted to build a place that was for musicians that would have access to instruments to be able to go and practice all day long, have their own room to play whatever instrument they want to play. Um, just because it would give them, it would also give kids the incentive to, Hey, if, if they want to play music, they would have a place where they could do that. And I just think it's a beautiful thing when musicians come together, it, there's nothing like it. It is, it is magical. If you've ever been to any type of audition and you see all these wonderful people just congregated together, it's magical. It is magical. It's just to be around and it's, and it's a uh, infatuating. I'm just trying to think of the words to properly describe it, but and it would be honestly my goal just to see kids that were like me, young kids, boys and girls, to be able to have access to a place where they can go and release themselves in this, whether it's in a little small studio, whether it's on a little small stage. I just feel like there would be a lot more creative arts in the works if that was accessible to them. And to also, like this is my personal, to see my wife happy, to see that she doesn't have to stress so that she doesn't, because she does, she's an independent woman, Pan. I, I, I give my wife all props whenever it comes to me because she keeps me level-headed. Like, she's, she's my rock on a major way. Like, I love her. She's, I love her so much. And I'm glad, I don't know if you could see her earlier. I did try to show her the video. She's beautiful. I did see her, and I did yes. see her pictures on Facebook. You guys are so cute. Thank you. Uh, I love that. So let's go ahead and show your second video. This one, um, this one is called Wild and Wonderful. Would you like to take a few minutes to talk about this one before I show it? Sure. Um, I actually wrote this song in honor of a good friend who is no longer with us anymore, but he passed away back in 2014. And he was somebody who was a truck driver, so he went all around the country of the United States delivering loads to people. And one of the things that was uh, great about this man, his name was Ricky Whipple, and he uh, always talked about how much he loved the state of West Virginia, how much he loved the sites, the people, everything. Anything about West Virginia, he loved it. He loved the state. And uh, he was a beautiful person. He was also a musician. And in his side time where I met him was at the Sagebrush Roundup, the other place that you know made me who I am. Uh, he, I met him performing there and anytime like when we first met uh, we just clicked we were best friends ever since and I would play on his show anytime he was at the sagebrush and we had uh, we had planned on a weekend to write a song together and unfortunately the weekend that I was supposed to go to his house he, he passed away so it, uh, this song takes a special meaning on that aspect to talk about his memory there's also a bonus scene at the end of the music video that we incorporated honoring him uh, and his love for the state of West Virginia and the people. So that's why West Virginia, Wild and Wonderful, came about. Yeah, that's why I started the interview with, you know, um, where you're from and to talk a little bit about that because I did notice that, you know, it, it was very well done. Uh, in the video. So let's 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 show this. And I'm going to meet you. you again, and I'll do all my all right. technical little things that I do, okay? 
Okay, thank you again. Okay. This song goes out to a very special friend who was always there whenever I needed him to be. Ricky Whipple, you will always be loved and missed. This song's for you. Driving down the road in my Sumatra Cruising with my baby, she's my buttercup Enjoying life Under West Virginia skies Oh, I love this great state And my lady There's not a single thing I would change these mountaineers and go miners as who we are and very proud to be and yeah them Let me bring you back. Let me bring you back. There we go. Awesome. I really uh, got to give shout outs to uh, Heidi and Ryan because those two are the ones who really brought that video to life. All I did was stand with my guitar in a spot where they wanted me and they did They did it. They made it work. And it's, it's a beautiful video, beautiful rendition. And if anybody wants to see the bonus scene, there is a bonus scene at the end of that video. Just check, go to YouTube and watch it fully. And yeah, You'll see I, ha it. I had to stop it because I'm looking at the time. There's another guest, yes. as you know. I need to bring in Alex. I want you yes. guys to say hello to each other between the transition of my guests. Now, I wanted to let you know that this video really showcased you, the person. Okay, you you have a gentle soul. You were outside in nature, right? Representing yes, your state. Um, yeah. And my advice to you is keep making great music, right? Keep Thank doing you. what you're doing. And I would love to bring you back on my show. Let's do this again. Yes, I would love to be. I would love that. That would be awesome. Yeah, let's uh, keep in touch and let's do this again. And if I have a music um, event, sometimes I schedule those music big events that I do, but that will wait till season three. And that okay. starts in September. But okay. yeah. You know, it goes that would like be, this. The summer's going to go like this. I'll be back be before fan. you know it. <laughs> hey, if you want to form a band, Pan, you let me know, okay? Because uh, the one thing is, if you notice with the videos, it's just me and my guitar. That's all that I've ever done is just me and my guitar. And I just know it would sound better if we had a full accompaniment. And yeah. so if you, if you, if that's something you might be interested in, maybe playing together sometime, that'd be awesome. I'd love to do that. I write lyrics. <laughs> that's <what it> <laughs> That's where, where it ends with me. Um, 
I dabble uh, a little bit on the piano and the guitar, but I, I, I'm not as close to anything like what I just saw. But yeah, I mean, sure, why not? I, we can, we can work together. We, I can write uh, a song and give it to you, and you can turn it into a beautiful song. Yeah. I mean, I can write the lyrics, and you can take it and, and create something beautiful. Why not? <laughs> I'm open to anything. All right. So I would. I would love to. Just any time yeah. you want to. Yeah. Thank right. you so much. Right. Let's bring Alex, my next yeah. guest, and let's say I'm, hi to him. Hi, Alex. Hi. What's up, Alex? What's Welcome up, to man? the show. What did you think? <laughs> what did you. you think of the first thirty minutes? Wasn't that awesome? It was. I love the. I love the first song and the and the story behind it, especially. Um, Thank and you. I actually watched your videos before because I, I know you sent it in a little group chat yes. thing. So I wanted to see what it was all about, and it was actually pretty cool, man. So thank much, you, I appreciate much it. Much pleasure to be in the same show with you and and get to hear. Yeah, it this is an honor. I'm behind it. This has yeah. been awesome. And yes. be honest, this is I think my second. Uh, see, I think I tried doing a Zoom interview before, but I was like I said earlier in the interviewer. <laughs> I'm not computer savvy, so I'm glad that everything went smoothly and I didn't stumble everywhere. Yes. <laughs> you did great. You were you were fantastic. Yeah. That was awesome. Thank you so much. I will have to say goodbye, but like I said, let's keep in touch. Sounds good. Yes. Thank you so much, guys, for having me and Alex. I'm looking forward to hearing your music as well, brother. Yes. Thank Thanks, you. Man. Thank you, Robbie. Oops, <laughs> that was a little bit too fast. So um, I'm glad I'm glad you enjoyed the first 30 minutes. Now you know how it's going to go down with you. Same thing. I yeah. keep it nice and fresh and light. I don't go into deep conversation unless my my guests would like to go there. Um, so let's let's introduce yeah. you. So you play many many instruments. That is so yes. impressive. Tell us all the instruments that you can play. Let's start with that because it's really impressive, <laughs> Alex. Uh. Um, Thank you. Uh, so my main instrument is saxophone. That's what I studied most of my life. Um, yes. But I, uh, I play flute, clarinet, trumpet, trombone, drums, keyboard, banjo, guitar, bass, ukulele, uh, oh triangle. Uh, <laughs> I, I play, think I can do the triangle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fiddle, violin, cello, viola, double bass. Um, so I'm, I'm a... I was a band director for for like a year, and uh, and I'm also an or I'm now an orchestra director and a choir director. I was for a little bit too, so I do a little bit of everything and kind of just jump in around all the different instruments that are available just to anybody. So yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So during the day, what do you do during the day? So uh, during the normal school year, I'm a teacher. Uh, I teacher. teach at a public school here in the district you know, where I live, and uh, it's just fifth and sixth grade beginner orchestra. Uh, and I help out with the band program. Uh, some years I'll teach saxophone, some years I'll teach flute, other years I'll teach clarinet. Um, so it just depends on uh, what they want me to teach that year. Uh, I just happen to be the woodwind person at that school. So when it happens to be that they need help on the woodwind side, that's what I'll help with. Uh, I love that. I love that. I love teachers in general. So, you know, you had me at I'm a teacher. I remember uh, chatting with you and you, you told me your day job. I'm like, oh, this is going to be good because I love teachers. You know, you help kids. It's all about the kids with me because I have two young daughters and my oldest daughter, she's uh, a musician. Yes, she is. She's eight years old and she can play the piano. She started when she was four. And now That's she awesome. wants to and now she wants to learn the violin. Um, she wanted to start earlier. I put the brakes on that because I didn't want her to get tired. Because she really pushes herself. She reminds me a lot of myself. She's very ambitious and she's only eight. So I said, you know what? Maybe next year when you're going to be, you know, a little bit older. And she said, okay. So now she's going to be doing both. Because her teacher can play both instruments. She, oh, okay. she, teaches, uh, she teaches piano and violin. So That's awesome. That teacher, she's, um, you know, she can, she can teach her both instruments at the same time. So I'm excited about that. So that's why... From, right from the start, I'm like, oh, I like Alex already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so now we know we know a little bit about that. And how old were you when you started playing music? Let's go back to your um, humble beginnings. I mean, I was young. My parents had an old like electric organ uh, that they got from like the '80s or something, and that I played on. And 
there were stickers on there they had put on there for me. They had a book from a from whoever they bought it from. Uh, it was like a I don't know if it was like brand new when they first bought it or if it was a garage sale or what happened. Um, so I make I was like maybe uh, about eight. I was in the U U.S. by then. So I'm originally from Italy. My mother's side is all Italian. So my oh. dad's Air Force he moved to San Antonio when I when I was like third grade, eight eight years old. And so uh, that's when I kind of started messing around with the keyboard. Um, around fifth grade, I went to like once a week guitar thing just to learn how to strum and place my fingers on stuff. My dad bought me like a half scale acoustic that I still have to this day. Oh. <laughs> um, and then sixth grade, I started learning saxophone because I heard on our local radio station, a bunch of saxophone stuff on Sundays after church. It was like yeah. a smooth jazz station. And I was like, I'm going to play that sound. Oh, that sounds cool. And it's like, that oh, my mom's like, oh, it's cool. a saxophone. So I was like, OK, I'm going to do saxophone. So um, and from there, it just kind of spiraled. I just kind of wanted to try everything. Um, I see. Mm -hmm. Are any of your parents um, musical? Like, where do you get this talent from? Well, my mother likes to sing. Uh, she doesn't play any instruments. Uh, but she does sing a lot, and she got me uh, listening to a lot of opera when I was mm. younger, paparazzi kind of stuff. She's very – everything's Italian. Everything's got to be Italian. So she's I very influenced that. by that. I love that. I'm Greek, and, actually. So we have okay. something in common. My parents, both of them were born in Greece, which, you know, mm -hmm. Italy's right next to Greece. And they immigrated yeah. to Canada, and I was born in Canada, and now I live in the United States. So I speak Greek. Do you speak Italian? Yes, I actually speak. I was that was pretty much like one of my first languages learning, but uh, I come and go with the, with learning it uh, because I started picking it back up. But I speak a little bit with my mother usually. Yeah. That's who I let me talk to at least. Right, right. Mm. Yeah, me too. It's like my my parents, my sisters, and my husband. I don't speak Greek with anyone else. <laughs> I don't. Have, yeah. I don't have too many Greek friends. Yeah. All right. So. Um, I'm excited because I want to get a little bit more into the, the fact that you are, oh yes, you're a musician, but you're involved with, um, playing music with many, many bands. So you're a member of at least six bands that you told me earlier. That Pretty is a much, lot, yeah. right? Six bands. I mean, most people can't even <laughs> stay in one band mm -hmm. and make music and, and get along. So how do you, how do you... How is it that you're a member of six bands and you're making it work and you work with all these people? Let's start with that. I'm curious to know. Um, so a lot of them aren't as busy in the gigging side, like performance side. Oh, okay. So um, some bands I play with are more, uh, much more busy than others. Um, and the rehearsals, I'm... Uh, I, I'm not like super, I'm not like a, a, a virtuoso of any instrument for that matter, but I understand music enough to where I can do my homework way in advance or the day of, or even in rehearsal and learn the whole song or songs that Ooh. we're learning. So okay. uh, I just kind of pick up on songs pretty naturally and how the form, the form goes, how the progression works. Cause I played um, in, you know, various different bands from jazz to pop, to country, to hip hop, to, I love Latin that. I love samba that. kind of stuff. So once you do that for a number of years, you kind of get the gist of where the, the structures are and the chord progressions move. And then you just kind of pick it up. I don't know. It's kind of like a um, uh, an osmosis type deal that just kind of absorb it. Okay. Um, so, so, so because like, of that, it's, it's easy to, to, to jumble around with different types of bands and different bands I in see. general. And you have mm -hmm. a schedule. You must have a schedule. And you know, okay, today it's I'm going to be working with this band. And this is the event that we're going to. And her rehearsal is at this time. You must have a packed schedule and you're very organized in order to be able to do all this, you know, to work with so many people, right? And make sure your schedule is, is that you're available at all times, right? When you book yeah. all these events with all your bands. Yeah. It's a lot. So uh, <laughs> I, uh, I eventually got a couple of years ago, well, I guess it was like two years ago, I got into uh, calendar work a lot and I love spreadsheets. Uh, so spreadsheets help me a lot. I love spreadsheets too. <laughs> I don't, I'm I don't an understand accountant. I love spreadsheets. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah. 
Yeah, uh, everything that's I do what is I do. Like on a that's my day job. You're a teacher. I'm an accountant. I love spreadsheets. I, that's all I do all day. I work on spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah. So I, I sent you a link to my website, and that website, the very first thing you're gonna see is a Google Sheet uh, <laughs> that has my schedule on there, and yes. <laughs> so it has like the days who I'm playing with, and then the next you know sheets within that document are the months and the calendar. So actually, where I'm playing at how long, what time and stuff like that. So I, that's where I share with all the bandmates. I'm like, here's my calendar. If you're trying to book something like a rehearsal or a gig or a performance, here's what I already have on my schedule. So if I can make it, then I will be there. If I can't make it, that's just why, you know? Okay. Um, you so I try to show my availability to everybody. You said the same thing to me when I was trying to book you on my show. Remember, you're like, go yes, to my that's website. Right. And I'm sorry. <laughs> You're like, girl, go to my website and see when I'm available. I'm like, okay, I like that because I'm, I'm like the manager. Same. Yeah. I manage. I do the same for my show. You know, I I, I keep yeah. a calendar. I I'm exactly like you. I have to be very organized, and um, yeah. So I for my show and also for my work and also for with my kids. I gotta put my kids activities in my schedule, so I never book a show when I have to be there for my kids. If they have an mm. event, for example. So I totally get it. Uh, what do you like about working with all these different bands? What do you get out of it? I know it's diverse. It's different styles of music. So I guess you are you like playing different styles of music. So it keeps you on your toes. But what else do you enjoy um, when you're part of these, these bands? What do you get out of it? So um, as I've been going through my therapy sessions... <laughs> Uh, I kind of notice where uh, my joy is the fact that I can, it's not that I like to be the center of attention, but I get a high off of performing for others. I like Ooh, to make okay. people smile. So I like to, I'm a, I guess you could say I'm a people pleaser, but in the sense of like being on stage and making them laugh or having a good time, smile or feel emotion. And I, I enjoy being a part of that journey. And so uh, a lot of the bands that I play with are cover bands or I have a couple that are original bands. But, um, you know, when you're with the cover band, especially where you're playing a lot of tunes that people really do recognize are on the, if you would say the, the you know, the A list of, of songs, you know, yeah. uh, the top 40, then people really get excited and they, they uh, start to jump around, have a good time, you know, and it's, that brings joy to me because I know that they're going to remember that experience from years to come um, from that specific performance. And I'm glad that I was a part of it. And so, um, so you that's, like, you that's like where making, I get it from. You like making people feel good. You like the energy you receive, right? Because you see them being happy. So it feeds your energy. And it, yeah, I love that. That makes sense to me. That totally makes sense. Now, um, you also do uh, a couple of projects on your own. Uh, let's talk about the Alex Sutherland project. What is that exactly for people who don't know? You're a, a so solo that artist is, as well. Yeah, so that's just my solo project. Um, eventually, it started out as a six-piece band in, when I was in college, and um, we won our we won, the reason why we got called Alex Sutherland Project is because we're trying to enter this talent show at our at our college to win some money. And it, we kind of just had to do something really quick and like, okay, we're going to call this band something eventually, but we're going to call it this for now because I was organizing it and that was me entering for the contest. So I entered us for the contest and uh, we, did a, we did one song. It was like this rendition of Dancing on the Ceiling of a Jazz Tube. Um, and it was like a hip hop version of it with brass ah. instruments and and stuff. Nice. And we won. We ended up getting first place the first year we did it. And after that, we started getting invited to all these different events. And because we got busy and the other people in the band were in other groups, it started dwindling. So it, it was from a six piece band down to a quartet, down to a trio, and then down to just me. Um, okay. And, uh, and sometimes it would grow <laughs> as specific events where I would have a you know eleven piece big band, where I right. would arrange and uh, write entire charts for the horn section, um, and have a singer and stuff like that. And that would be my project. So it my project has been evolving from 
big band to little me and to small little quartets. And it's become more or less not an artist uh, writing thing, but more a performance thing. And for okay. the few songs that I do have that I've written or I have uh, covered or rearranged rather, it's uh, it's not, it still to this day hasn't been come to fruition yet. So unfortunately it's not really like, uh, how would you say, a solidified product as an as a solo artist as far as writing original music and promoting myself as an original artist. It's been more so of a of a product in a in a service company. Yeah. So to which speak. it's no, mm -hmm. but it's good. It's good to to clarify that because um there's a demand for that. There's mm -hmm. always corporate events, there's always uh, a demand where people want to hire musicians and have people come and and perform and really like they they tell you okay this is what we need for this event can you deliver this if they want cover songs if they want original songs whatever I think there's potential there for you to really grow with this you know even even maybe get more people to 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 be part of it I'm telling you there's so much demand in that um there's not a lot of people who who do this mm -hmm. you know so oh they, i know yeah <laughs> you know like, and that's um, kind of been pushing my career because of it so yeah. yeah yeah now what's the dj in pasta um i know we talked about it behind the scenes but i want you to explain it for our viewers tell us about um, that. the dj gives so, it away so <laughs> it's it yeah so it's a that one's a little bit more original but also it's still more of a service pro a product. Um, yeah, service. I get hired to play at special events. Uh, we're not play, but perform as a DJ or, you know, just playing the hits, if you will, mixing and remastering certain things and looping and layering stuff. And sometimes I'll play saxophone over that yeah. stuff, you know, like Amazing. I'll loop a certain section of a popular song and I'll just jam by myself. And people enjoy that because like, oh, God, he plays saxophone. And that's been like a thing that's been happening for like the past decade. A lot of DJ artists have been coming around where like, I do play an instrument. I don't just, you know, hit a button and move. Right. You don't only around. mix, you actually loop things, music that mm -hmm. you actually create yourself. Let's say even from cover songs, you loop it and then you go there and you do your solo with the saxophone. It's, it's, it's great. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Not so a lot of people that do happens, this, I'm telling then, you. <laughs> yeah. And of course on the side, because I'm still a DJ, uh, I do get hired for like karaoke stuff. So I okay. do I do set up a karaoke station and invite people up to sing and and then I'll jam with them on saxophone too, just like, you know, on a on a solo spot. Um some songs I can take away certain instruments so I can just jump in there as the main instrument. But that doesn't happen too often. Uh only for like specific events for specific songs. Uh, yeah. but yeah, I just again another service industry type deal. Where would you like your your projects to go five years from now? Where would you like to, well, where would you like to, I want to phrase it nicely. How would you like your services or your business? Because they're businesses. Let's be honest here, okay? You're running mm -hmm. a business, two businesses, separate ones. Where would you like your businesses to be in five years from now? Um, so in five years, I would really like to have you know, an album or two. Uh, I've already been working on uh, arranging a solo album where I'm playing all the instruments. Um, okay. So yeah. I'm going to re be recording in a studio, you know, from the keyboard to the bass to the string section to the uh, drums to saxophone, maybe some harmonizing. I will have to hire a, a vocalist because I'm not that strong of a singer. Uh, for some of the songs that I've written, or I've I've uh, I've taken some songs that another person's given me and wanted me to write into a song, like they gave me the lyrics or a poem. I'm sure you can and then find. I'll write them into song. I'm sure you can find lots of people who would like to be part of that. And oh yeah, you know, yeah. And I've already had a couple people that came to me yeah. and asked me about it. So it's go. it's something to happen. Um, and with the summers, that's usually where I I double down on my on my ventures uh, artistically because during the school year I am oh. super busy. So I'll be up at 6 a.m. to go to school 
and teach all day long. And then at 3.15, unless I have something to do after school, like a meeting or uh, a student teacher or a parent teacher conference or whatever, I, uh, I will be playing a show, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yes. So I'll be, uh, sometimes I get three or four hours of sleep or sometimes, you know, I'll get a nap in between and then go drive hours away and then come back, you know? Yeah. So it's a lot of travel, well, a lot of uh, working. <laughs> it is, it's, you know, but it's your passion. So you can do it when you love something, you can do it. Right. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, Alex. <laughs> okay. Oh um, yeah. Let, yeah. I mean, if, if it was something you didn't love, you would, you wouldn't um, put all the, these hours and, uh, and all that energy, you know, it's when you really love something like, for example, when I do my show, um, a lot of times I say to myself, why am I doing this? You know, it, it's, something extra on top of like all the other things that I have to do. But then I keep reminding myself that I love it. This is my outlet. This is where I get to socialize and, and put smiles on people's faces. And uh, what you were talking about earlier, when you're on that stage, this is my stage. It's not a real mm -hmm. stage, but it's my, it's my um, way of um, making people feel good. And I love to make people feel good. And make, mm -hmm. I see them smile, you know, and highlight them and, make them feel like superstars for those that 30 minutes that they're with me, you know, or an hour or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I want to showcase your videos. There's time. Um, and if we mm -hmm. go a little bit over, that's okay. So the first one is you, it's called, um, BB groove. Is that the title? BB groove free yeah, jam. It's, a, it's just a B flat groove jam. Yo, oh, B flat. okay. It's like the yeah. music notes. Okay. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, I, I, I see it now. Um, and I know my notes because with my daughter, I've learned a lot. But I was like, I just wanted to make sh sure it's not like a title or something that I'm missing. Out. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me play that. I got that from so all of the videos are from uh, your YouTube channel. Let's talk very quickly um, about your YouTube channel. Is it something that you would like to grow? Would you like people to to subscribe and follow you? Are you putting a lot of videos? Um, um, so something? at the moment, I'm not, I'm not putting a lot of videos still, um, because a lot of my focus on YouTube has been on my other channel, my teacher channel, and that oh, has another one. hundreds, hundreds of videos of oh, okay. uh, lessons actually. So I actually teach a lot of little lessons on there for the violin, piano, and viola, cello, and bass. So what's the name of that channel? Mr. Sutherland. Just, oh, Mr. Sutherland. It? Okay. Yeah. This one is your uh, real name, Alex Sutherland. Correct. This, the, mm -hmm. the ones that you sent me, those videos are from the, the, se the separate uh, channel that you have, not your teaching correct. one. <laughs> I need to yeah. go check the other one out now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So let me let me take care of a few things and then we'll, we'll uh, showcase the first one. And probably, yeah, we'll make time for the, the other two. The other two videos are from your bands. OK. Um, yes. So then we, we can see. Um, see a little bit of uh, what you do with the bands, you know? It's it's funny mm -hmm. how you see someone doing something solo versus being in a band. It's completely different. The energy is different. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just um, mute your microphone. Uh, have some technical things to take care of on my end. There we go. I found it. And in this one, you're playing the saxophone. Um, so cool, right? The saxophone is, is such a great instrument. The sound is so beautiful. It's great. Let's do this. <laughs>
it was it was short. I wish it was longer. Yeah. It was just a well, little it, clip, it, it, right? A little clip of when you yeah. when you did your solo thing, right? It was mm -hmm. one of your performances, I would assume, at an event. And then there mm -hmm. you had your your two minutes and you were like rocking it. <laughs> yeah. So that that group is called Tiny Jazz. Oh, uh, it's Tiny literally Jazz. just me and a trumpet player. Uh, and sometimes we invite other guests to, to play or sing with us, but it's really like a, a uh, we joke about it as calling it jazzy -yoke. It's like, a, a, yeah, so it's a <laughs> lot of backing tracks for yeah. horn players to jam to. And so we, he, the, the lead person there, John Spears, uh, he created all the tracks for it and organized it in a way where we can perform it in a live manner rather than something that's so, you know, very specific from beginning to end. But we do still call it jazzy -yoke because we're just jamming over tracks or specific songs that we actually have written out uh, parts for. And then there's a backing track with a rhythm section that plays that we play along with. And so, so that was, was my it? improvised portion. Oh, mm -hmm. so it was your improv. Okay, that was my question. You, you did improvise it on the spot. It wasn't like it was yes. like rehearsed. Okay, no. I love that. I love that. Very nice. Now let's showcase another video. Um, with one of your bands, okay? So the band is called Corey Weaver Band, okay? Yes. Oops, hold on a sec. It started automatically, sure. I don't know why that happened. Um, yeah, so uh, Chicken Fried, is that, is, let's, is that the song, Chicken Fried? <laughs> it is, actually, it's it is? a Zach Brown song, yes. <laughs> Zach Brown song. I should have done my homework. I'm like, listen, it must, Talk about the song. Why did why did why did you guys play this song? Why did your band um, decide to do this song? <laughs> so it it's a, we're at a country venue. Uh, yes. A lot of country music. This band is a country band. Oh, it's and, a and country that band, band. Okay. Mm -hmm. In that band, I play piano, saxophone, banjo, and fiddle. And so, um, that song is a country song by the Zach Brown Band. And so it's it was a really popular song, and it still kind of is. Uh, that people like to dance to and sing to and so that was one of the songs that country. we kind of put in our repertoire mm -hmm. i don't know my country i'm so embarrassed i'm like this probably that's is okay famous. i i told myself today okay i'm like this is probably a famous song. i didn't have time though to do my homework because i was pulling my hair but i was like this is probably a famous song and i've never heard of it you know i said i'll just be honest i i don't know my that's country funny. very good you know i grew up in montreal canada I'm just very that's gonna not have any country in it yeah <laughs> there's not a lot of Mr. country Toby Keith. up yeah up upstate new york now they do uh, there's a lot of country radio stations i do listen to some country i'm getting to know more uh all the famous country singers i mean i always knew mm -hmm. the most popular ones but i don't know i don't know much so but it's good it's that's a okay. good song let's let's showcase it let's have some fun now okay yeah again give me some time to do my little <laughs> My little sure, things sure. here. Yeah. Okay. There it is. And I don't know why it started earlier. Um, yeah. And we see you there. Um, there's a lot of people on the stage, you guys. Okay. So let's see if you can find Alex. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. I'm going to mute your microphone as well. And uh, yeah. Let's have some fun. Let's do this. We're going to have a good sound this Friday night. We're going to keep the party going now with a little Zach Brown. Zach Brown. Okay. Oh 
some country i got a big crush on country country's growing on me that was so much fun yeah. and i know who you were you were the guy with the cool glasses and playing the keyboards weren't you yeah that's me yeah <laughs> that was you because look you play so many instruments i'm like he could be anywhere up he could be doing the right. drums he could be like but i i recognize you and i hope everyone did recognize you as well yeah see i was the one in the coca-cola hawaiian shirt yes so. <laughs> yes, next to the lead singer, and you were playing the keyboards, and you were wearing your glasses. So cool. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone looked like they were having fun, right? On that stage, that energy. You must feel so energized after you guys wrap up the event, right? The show. It, how oh, how yeah. do you feel? How do you feel? Walk us a little bit through that. The show's over, right? You've mm -hmm. been playing for, let's say, an hour, maybe even more. How do you feel afterwards? Uh, so it's invigorating, you know, it's, uh, it's a sense of accomplishment because you get that feedback from all those different people that come to watch you and enjoy all the music that, you know, that you provide for them. And you can yes. see them the whole time they're dancing. If you can see in the video there, there's a big dance floor at that place. Yes. It's a, and so they're, they're continuously having a good time listening. To, it's not some DJ playing the song. It's live it's music. It's live music. And yeah. yeah. And it's, it's, it brings you back to where like uh, music should have been, you know, this whole time. Uh, always being provided to people in a live setting where you, you can enjoy themselves, you know. Yeah. And so I, I kind of like that whole aspect of it. And it makes my, makes my heart full at the end of the night. And then, of course... You know, we're just talking about everything and going over all the mistakes or the the, the plus sides uh, after everything. So it's it's a it's it's still a business thing to me at the end of the end of the day. But I do feel fulfilled after that. You know, yeah. uh, it completes my heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's it's fun, like you were saying, to um, be part of a a band. And you guys go there and you're, you, you know, you're killing it and you see the, the audience having fun and they're dancing. I mean, I couldn't even, I mean, I was watching it on my screen and I was dancing and I felt good. You know, Chicken mm -hmm. Fried is a good song. <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that was a very tame song. Uh, oh, or rather really? not song, but performance. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah you there's can some really videos like on my it. Instagram. There's yeah. some videos on my Instagram where I'm playing saxophone and I'm a complete lunatic. So uh, I just, I become very uh, lively when it comes to my turn to play solos or specific songs. Um, so let's especially talk Especially with that group. So we talked about, we talked about your um, YouTube. There's one where it's more you being a teacher. You have a lot of videos where you, you know, you do more teaching videos. Um, now we talked about... Um, you know, you as an artist where you trying to grow that channel, where you put your performances from your bands or maybe more solo acts that you're going to be doing. But mm -hmm. let's talk about your website. You have a very good website. Again, it's your name, 
alexsutherland.com. If people want to hire you for events, if they want to approach you, Alex, and invite you, I don't know, if they want to have you come to their weddings, corporate events, tell people how they can contact you. If they go to your website, I guess that's the best way to find you, right? And, and reach out. Mm -hmm. My number's on there and my email's on there. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If ever I do a big event, Hit me I up. May need, yeah. I may need you, Alex. Of course, there's also Facebook Messenger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, you know what I'm going to do, Alex? Before I even send you a message, I'm going to go look at your schedule, see if you're even available. <laughs> yes, you're such a that busy would be person. wise. <laughs> yes. No, I hate, um, I hate hearing, I did that especially because I, I hate telling people, no, I can't be it, be there for that uh, because I'm already doing something else. So I, I, would, I hate doing that. Because I, I never, I never wanted to let people down, especially if they're looking forward to hire me for something, or they're just in need. You know, sometimes I'm not the first call; I'm like the last call. And still, yeah. you know, it sucks to be, to be uh, left hanging when you're trying to fill a position or get a specific artist out there, or just have music in general. You know. Yeah, I have a couple of ideas um, in my mind that I don't really want to announce right now. Um, but the goal is to expand my show and to actually organize live events that represent the show, mm -hmm. like the live show, okay? And I'm not ready to discuss it yet. It will be all like where I'm from. I'm from Albany, New York. And mm -hmm. this city is, is not happening. This city, there's a lot of good musicians, but nothing really pulls them in. There's always the surrounding towns that people go to all these, like there's Sar Saratoga that's not too far, New York City, Boston. And I was thinking of growing my show in a way that I can actually invite musicians. I will organize events and bring musicians that I've met on my show and they will come to my events. And I'm going to live stream my events, but there's also going to be like, you know, where people can attend, the, attend these events and buy tickets. My mind is always I busy, see. Alex. But I haven't made an mm -hmm. official announcement and it's not very clear yet how I'm gonna do it. But it, it's in the works. So guess who you get mm -hmm. guess who's gonna guess who's gonna contact you very soon one of these days, Alex? <laughs> Looking forward can, to it. Can yeah. you come to Albany, New York? Would you be willing to come to Albany, New York? Yeah. I haven't been in New York in a while, so for sure. Yeah. I think I think uh, that would be something that uh would interest people to create to create shows where people can come and perform and they can actually make money out of and have something live that I can also stream. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm crazy. I have all these crazy ideas, <laughs> but I can't it's help great. myself. I'm very, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. I love I love expanding. I get bored very easily. So this is something that I would like to do. And I'm already speaking to a couple of venues and it, it may happen. It may happen. All right. Yeah. All right. I have one more, um, not one more venue, one more video. And let's talk yes. about that one. This one is with another band. OK, uh, let's mm -hmm. talk about uh, the, the band, first of all, and the, the song that that you sent me before I show. Yeah. It. So this is Blackbird Sing. It's an all originals band. Um, yes. They have I haven't necessarily say they coined the term, but I think they coined the term Texicana. So it's Texas Ooh. Americana. Texas uh, Americana, music. okay. So it, yeah, Texicana is what they like to call it, and um, they were they were originally uh, some of the members in the band were originally part of a punk rock group in the '90s called Die Boy, um, and they were around for quite a while. They had a huge following, and then they kind of evolved into uh, this Americana group, uh, which I don't I don't know too much about the whole history, but I know a little bit because I'm a fairly new member of it. Uh, yeah. They've been around for over a decade or so, maybe 14 years as How did they uh, find you? as a band. <laughs> How did they well, find funny you? story. Um, <laughs> so in my neighborhood or neck, my neck of the woods, there's a venue that I, I played at a few times. And I know the owner uh, through these uh, performances. And at that venue, you're supposed to bring your own PA system. Well, Blackbird Sing showed up and I didn't know anything about this band. I've only heard the name. I never seen them. Um, yeah. They showed up and didn't have a PA system. So the owner messages me and said, hey, do you think you'd be available to to run sound and bring your PA for this band? They didn't bring one. 
And I said, yeah, I'm actually free. I can do that. So I hauled my gear over there. I had communication with the band. Uh, I think it was most of the, the drummer, Daniel. And then I talked a little bit to Marcus, the bassist. And uh, then we kind of like hit it off from there. I told him I was looking for work. I'm a saxophone player. Gave him my business card. I said, hey, I do play all these instruments too. And um, they said, oh, we might might be picking you up with something or get to get to do an audition or whatever and so uh i think maybe it was a couple of weeks later we got to talking and i went to their their uh bird shed or <laughs> it's a it's literally a, a wood like a, a shed outside that's been turned into a rehearsal space I see. and the bird's nest i think they call it yeah so uh we go in there and i meet everybody and audition uh, go through some of the songs that we, he sent me, uh, the lead singer, Robert, or Vito, we call him. And I went from there. I think we've now been with the band for a little, for about two years now. Nice. Uh, yeah. Or maybe did you a little tell them that, that you're remember. coming it's, on my show? Did you tell them that you're coming on my show and we'll show you the video? And yeah? So cool, yeah, right? So I, I, that some of them should be watching, I think, because they were texting me just a little while ago saying they're watching right now. Yeah, and so, so cool. yeah. I said, yeah, that's we're going to show them a little bit of a video. Uh, that's why yeah. I'm going over time because um, I felt bad. I, I had a feeling maybe you told your band members that. And then I'm like, I can't I can admit that everyone is watching and they're hoping to, you know. Yeah, I was like, I told them I was going to shout them out. Exactly. <laughs> and I was I, and then I knew that I knew you did that. I had a feeling. So I'm like, oh, you know what? We'll go over. It. It's OK. So let's do this. I'll. I'll mute everything okay. and let's show that will be the last video. This was so much fun. Thank you for coming on my show. We'll do this again. Tell your band members they're always welcome to come on my show if they want for sure to come and I can give everyone an interview all all the band members together. Well, for all of your bands, I mean, not all six together, but one at a time. I can have an interview yeah. with them. We can showcase uh -huh. more videos. And like I said, if um, I do actually make what I discussed earlier happen. I'll start mm -hmm. with one event, one event where I bring, I organize it and I bring all these artists together for a live event with, with a real audience. And I'm also going to be live streaming it. If that ever happens, you have to come, you have to come. I because, will. And, and all your bands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all, all six sure. of them. Why not? Let's make all this. Six. Uh, Why not? Yeah. Um, okay, so let's It'll do It'll be a this. busy day for me, but not for everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, you can come it's alone okay. or you can bring all of them and you can perform like the whole time. <laughs> One exactly, after the other, yeah. right? They'll all get mm -hmm. to know each other. <laughs> all yeah, right, real so cool. well. <laughs> okay. All right. So let me just take care of a couple of things, okay? Okay.
we have shows where there's like nobody there, and then we have somewhere that place is full. So we kind of realized that I think we're doing it for this audience. For ourselves, yeah. And hopefully the other audience will pick up on that and enjoy it as well. fun Alex you're amazing you're amazing you can you can Thank do you. it all country rock <laughs> R&B jazz you can do it all see teachers I try. see teachers are the best never underestimate <laughs> a teacher <laughs> that's you right yeah all. definitely yes um, and your students are probably so lucky to have you <laughs> I mean, no, I phenomenal. Hope so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I had so much fun doing this show today uh, with Robbie too and yourself. Um, it, 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 you know, it's the highlight of my day. You know, this is, this is so much fun for me. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, of course. I hope you had fun, right? Me too. I did. You mm -hmm. did. You did. Okay. Yes. Well, I want to thank everyone who tuned in. There was a lot of people watching live. Uh, and it's actually surprising because when I do my show at noon, uh, there's not a lot of viewers. They usually watch the replay when they get home or in a few days afterwards. But there, there was a lot of people watching. So I'm very pleased. Um, and yeah, guys, please share it out. Please uh, tag your friends, watch the replay and reach out to Alex if you need. You need a musician to music. Yeah, yeah, he does it all. He does it all. All right. Thank you so much, Alex. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'll see you guys next week. There's no uh, no other show this week scheduled. I have three shows next week. And then uh, the live show of Close and Mike is taking a break this summer. Um, except for, like, some improv nights that I will still do. There's going to be three in the summer, and that's it. But I will be back for season three in September. Sounds good? All right, Sounds everyone, good. have a nice day. Bye. 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 <laughs>